Heavenly Father, Eternal Father, God, I, we come now, Father God, lifting your name. Thank you for you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity. Thank you, God, for who you are, for the way you do things. We say hallowed to your name. We honor you. We praise you tonight. We bless you, Father God, for you are God. You are our King. You are our Majesty. You are the Eternal One. You are God all by yourself. And we thank you, Lord. Now we come lifting you before others, Father God. For we know, Father God, that you are our hope. And you have been our strength in ages past. Lord, we come, Lord, Father God, calling on you. For you are the one who makes the difference. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for another privilege to study your word. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us through your word. We pray, Father God, that you minister to us tonight through your word. We ask you, Father God, to bless our lives, that our lives will continue to roll on, that we will tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of God. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins. Bless us, Father God, that nothing stands between us and you. That, Father, we would be offered a clean slate. That life, Father God, for us, Father God, would be one that is spiritual and not carnal. One that is spiritual, that is not natural. That men, women, boys, and girls who are natural men and carnal men will come to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Thank God for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. We completed the book of 2 Thessalonians on last week. And so the rest of this year, we will be dealing with topics, uh, uh, hot topics, topics that will, will bless us and make us strong. So tonight, we're going to deal with the topic of anxiety, 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 being anxious, anxiety. So the rest of this year, we'll pick up with phrases and topics like Thanksgiving, topics like Christmas. But in between those two, we want to talk about uh, key things that will help us be made the better. Thank you so much for following our Bible study as we've been talking about the Pauline epistles, the Pauline epistles. We call it the Pauline epistles because these epistles have been written by Apostle Paul. These are letters that Apostle Paul has, has written. And we'll pick back up there next year if the Lord says the same. We have several more. He, he wrote 13 known and maybe some others. So tonight we want to deal with the word anxiety. A-N-X-I-E-T-Y. A-N-X-I-E-T-Y. Anxiety. So I'm going to call your attention to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 4 through 7. As we deal with topics, as we deal with topics, we will be running through several passages of Scripture because it is a topical message. It is a topical Bible study. As you see us going through the books of the Bible and we're going through certain pericopes, these are called uh, pericope studies or Bible studies that are, that are expositional Bible studies. They, they deal with explaining one particular pericope. They are ex expositional Bible studies. But tonight we begin for the rest of this year, topics, topical Bible study. It's a topic. And when you're dealing with a topic, one has to usually deal with several passages of scripture. But each night we're looking to have a particular passage that we will springboard board from to deal with a particular topic. So I may end up in a, another passage of scripture. I have two more in mind as we, we dive into this tonight. Anxiety from Philippians chapter, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4 through 7. We're dealing with the word anxiety, being anxious. I'm reading from a New King James Version. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Dealing with anxiety. Anxiety is anxious expectation. Anxiety takes our physical, our emotional, as well as our spiritual man through some channels, through some stuff. And we have enough stuff going on around us to be anxious. And it's human nature to be anxious, to be at a point where we are twiddling our thumbs, biting our nails, sweating and and panicking under pressure. Today we have enough to cause anxiety. But I believe that anxiety can be dealt with through the word of God. Professional scientists believe that there's no real cure for, for anxiety. They believe that you can medicate it but it's going to keep on coming back. I submit to you tonight, yes, medication is good, but I just believe that the word of God has a much, has a lot, has much to say about this study of anxiety. Anxiety begins when there's stress. Some people get anxiety from traumatic events. Others get anxiety from genetics means, meaning that it was passed from one generation to the other, one family member to the other. Usually when a family is caught up with anxieties, it's the mother that has anxiety, the daughter who has anxiety. People are nerved up. I want to submit to us as be born again believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can get past it. We can be delivered from it. We don't have to be in the midst of anxiety and nervousness all the time. First of all, you need to know that worry and anxiety are not synoptic to each other. They are slightly different. <laughs> Pharrell, a few few years ago, came out with the song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Uh, he says to praise, praise like you're in a room with no roof. One brother came out with a song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And, and we latched on to those two songs. And it gave us hope. It gave us great expectation. Anxiety now is at an all-time high. Food chains have fallen apart in America. COVID-19 is still on the rise, even though we thought it was going down. Anxiety is becoming a part of us because the winter time is coming and it is said by scientists that COVID-19 will, will prop up again. Anxiety has been a, a popular thing in the world that we live in because somebody is afraid of somebody. Someone has threatened someone. Somebody is afraid of somebody that, that's going to get out of jail and they're going to look them up. Anxiety is, is at an all-time high. Children are being left alone. Children are being killed. Divorce rates in the church is just, are just as high as divorce rates outside of the church. Anxiety is, is raging all about us. You see, worry is temporary. When you worry, you think about one particular thing and and you latch onto that thing and you worry about it and, and you, you beat yourself up about it. It's worry when you focus on one particular incident or one particular problem and you just can't get past it. It's called worry. 
But anxiety is much more ongoing. Anxiety goes from one problem to the other. It is, it is it's similar to, to paranoia. I can always hear something. I can always see something that, that causes me to tense up. People are tense about their job. People are tense about unemployment. People are tense about the direction that our country is going in. Anxiety is running crazy and running us crazy. Even though scientists said that anxiety has no cure, they say that you can only be medicated. I say to you that the word of God has answers. Oftentimes, anxiety calls us to isolate ourselves and look inward to ourselves. One theory is to develop a breathing technique to bring your anxiety down. Another theory is to hold your breath, count to five, count to 10 to bring your anxiety down. But the Bible says much about it. When we look at Philippians chapter 4, verse, verses 4 through 7, the Apostle Paul is talking to them about anxiety. He says to this new founded church in, in, in Philippi, he says to them, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The Apostle Paul, and I know we've covered this whole book of Philippians, so you may remember all these things that I'm going to talk about tonight but I think it's good fruit for us to develop and to grow from and to make sure that anxiety doesn't take control of us. We are concerned about whether to go to church. We're concerned about whether to go to work. We're concerned about whether our children are gonna be safe. We're concerned about whether our family members are going to like what we're doing. The Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And as you, if you didn't hear him the first time, he comes back again and he says, <laughs> again, I say rejoice. So the first thing I see here is the Apostle Paul tells us to praise the Lord. Sister Davis sung earlier about praising the Lord and she talked about how regardless of your circumstances, you ought to praise him. And yes, praise is a good place to get rid of anxiety because when you're praising the Lord, you focus on him and not your problems. I'm talking to somebody tonight because people all over this world are going through trouble, going through traumatic times, and they're tensed up. You don't know if you're going to have a job tomorrow. You don't know where you're going to eat tomorrow. Jesus has an answer for that. People don't know whether you're going to be their friend tomorrow, whether you're going to disown them tomorrow. Anxiety has built up all around us. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, rejoice. And then he says, rejoice again. Verse, verse 5, he says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. In other words, don't get so bent out of shape that you cannot remind men that the Lord is present. Regardless of who's on the, in the White House, regardless of who's in the governor's house, regardless of, of who's in, in, in City Hall, we need to understand that the Lord is yet on the throne. And as the Lord is still on the throne, there's still hope. There ought to be hope. We ought to have some hope within us we ought not be worried and, and tensed up about everything. Many people are, are worried about full grown children. And I know they're yours, but when you turn them over to the Lord, you need to understand that the Lord can do more with them than you could ever do. Some people have good children and, and, and because they have good children, they wanna make sure they keep them close to them so nothing will happen. Let me tell you, something can happen to your child right there while you're standing there. Yes, but you got to let the Lord handle it. 
He says in verse number five, let your gentleness be, be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Trust in the Lord. Put your faith in the Lord. And as you put your faith in the Lord, get rid of the worry. Get Push aside from from day-to-day -day routines of thinking that this is going to go wrong, this is going to go wrong. Too many people look at what could go wrong when they won't look at what could go right. We got to focus on what could go right, not what could go wrong. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6, the Apostle Paul says, be anxious for nothing. This word anxious, it, it leads us right back to the word anxiety. He says, don't have anxiety over anything. For when we trust in God, when we walk with him, we understand really well that, that, that God is in control. Things will always happen that's out of our control. Don't be anxious. Don't have anxiety over it. Then Paul says in, in verse, three, verse 6, he says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known, be made known to God. So my second point, my first point was praise. My second point is prayer. And he says here, first of all, you need to pray. And you need to supplicate. When you pray, you're calling on the Lord. You're having a general conversation with him. You're having dialogue with him. You, you're walking with him. He's walking with you. When you pray, you're talking to the Lord, but you're also allowing the Lord to talk to you. When you have anxiety, there's nothing better than letting the voice of the Lord calm you down. Yes. And his voice is all throughout the word of God. When you have tension, when you have anxiety, when you're anxious about something, pick up his word. He says, through prayer and supplication. So first of all, prayer is a general conversation with God. Secondly, uh, supplication is when you, you spend time alone with him in agonizing prayer. Supplication means that you you really, really trust in God so much you can feel it deep down within because you are you are wailing because of him. You're crying out to him. It is symbolic to, to Jacob saying, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been to the point where you had come face to face with the Lord in prayer? And you have come to the conclusion, the Lord, if the Lord doesn't bless me, I can't be blessed. If the Lord doesn't help me, I can't be helped. There's an old 100 that we used to sing back home. If the Lord doesn't help me, I can't stand the rain. If the Lord doesn't deliver me, I can't take it. We have to get to a point where we supplicate where we call on God like never before, where we call on God with such vigor until we know if the Lord doesn't help us, we're going to die in a moment. When we supplicate, we give all we have physically, spiritually, and emotionally unto the Lord. Supplicate means, God, I'm totally open and I'm totally dependent on you. When a person is laying in the hospital and they don't know if they're in the world or not, <laughs> their family members are in supplication before the Lord. And they're telling the Lord, Lord, I can't stand the rain. If the Lord doesn't help me, I can't take this. When, when that person comes through, they are reminded. They are reminding the person and they are reminded how they went before the Lord in prayer. They began by just slowly having a general conversation with the Lord. Jesus says, when you're talking to the Lord, you ought to start off by thanking him and glorify him by saying, hallow it to your name. Lord, we honor you. We glorify you. You ought to start off praising God and honoring him. Then he says, not only should you supplicate, 
you should also have thanksgiving. Thank God for who he is and what he has done. Thank God for how he has handled your business. Because if you handle God's business, God can handle yours. Praise him for how he's taking care of you, taking care of family members, taking care of neighbors and friends. You ought to be, be grateful to God for what he has already done. Apostle Paul says, begin by praising. He says, begin by rejoicing. He says, then walk in prayer, having a general conversation with God, supplicating before him. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane until blood dropped, until sweat dropped like drops of blood. It's when you give your very all in prayer. He says, whatever you do, be thankful. Be thankful. Never be ungrateful to what God is doing. If God says no to your prayer, always thank him because it simply means that God knows more about your situation than you do. And because he knows more about your situ situation than you do, then God himself is able to bless you. He's able to keep you. And when he does not say no, does not say yes to your prayers, and he does say no to your prayers, that means God has something better for you. He knows what's long down the road. He, he can see farther than we can see in the darkness. Trust God. Don't be anxious. Give thanks even when God says no to your prayers. He says, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made, made known to God. Too often we, we write our prayers where everybody else can see them. We make our requests so everybody else can see them. Sometimes we, we go out of our way to tell everybody in the room and everybody listening our business through prayers. Lord, bless my boy who is running crazy, who's been locked up who's on drugs. The Bible says, take your request to God himself. The good thing about Jesus, what he did on Calvary, he, he told the veil of the temple in half, in two, from top to bottom, meaning that no one could tear that veil but God. When Jesus died on Calvary, the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom, and now we can go before the Lord boldly humbly with confidence all by ourselves. All we have to do is call up Jesus and say, Jesus, I need to get to God. That's why we open up our prayer in Jesus' name. We close our prayer in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name because Jesus is the key to get to God. Good thing about the veil of the temple being rent from top to bottom, we don't have to depend on the preacher to pray for us. We can pray for ourselves. The pastor ought to be teaching the people how to call on God and not call on him. It's not a problem with calling on your pastor to pray with you, but you ought not call on your pastor to pray for you. What you talking about, preacher? What I'm saying to you is don't depend on anybody else, including your preacher, to do all your praying for you. That's why when I, I talk to people, I say to them, I am praying for you and I'm praying with you. In other words, I'm praying for you that the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. But as I'm praying, I want you to be praying with me. So I'm praying with you as you're praying. We are agreeing on what we want God to do. And if I'm going to be praying for you, then I need you praying also. So therefore you're praying with me and I'm praying with you. He says, let your request be known, be made known to God himself. Let your request be made known to the one who can make things right. Let your request be made known to, to God. I see posts all the time when people are trying to get somebody else's attention. And they're trying to get somebody else's attention and they're writing it in a post but the fact of the matter is, if you're going to write it, write it unto the Lord. 
If you're going to speak it, speak it unto the Lord. If you're going to request it, request it unto the Lord. Ask God for what you need and what you want. Because verse number seven tells all. Verse number seven says, the peace of God. He says, make your request known unto God in the peace of God. This peace which surpasses all understanding. The God that we serve has a peace in the midst of our troubles, in the midst of our turmoil, in the midst of our worries, in the midst of, in the midst of our anxiety, in the midst of our anxiousness, God himself offers us peace. I said to students on, on Monday night, sometime God calms the storm, but other times God calms his child in the midst of the storm. You can have peace when things are going crazy around you. You can have peace in the midst of a storm. You can have peace while everybody else is in chaos because God is able to calm the child in the storm. Sometimes God calms the storm. Sometimes God stands on the top of the ship, raises his hands over the sea. The winds and the waves are going crazy. The waves are, are above the boat. The winds are so strong that it's rocking the boat back and forth. Jesus stands up and Jesus says, peace, be still. And the winds and the waves lay down like a sleeping baby. Other times, the winds and the waves don't lay down. They only lay down when Jesus says for them to lay down. But there are some times that Jesus doesn't even tell the winds and the waves to lay down. And you, his child, you are in the midst of this storm. And the waves are still there. The songwriter says, if the storm does not cease, my soul is anchored in the Lord. <laughs> when the winds and the waves in my life just keep right on blowing, the good news is my soul is anchored in the Lord. And if God does not calm the storm, if God does not calm the wind and the waves, thank God he is able and he will and he has calm the child in the storm. Praise God. I mean, things will be going crazy around you mm -hmm. and people looking at you, waiting on you yes. to lose it. Yeah. But it says the God that we serve has a peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. In other words, we really can't get with that because it's a God thing. <laughs> and we don't understand all the things of God. God protects us as a military God protects the entire city. God watches over us and we can't even understand. Some of us, even today, as we celebrate the Marines birthday and tomorrow we celebrate Veterans Day, some of us still cannot figure out why a person would risk their lives to save ours. Why would 18 and 19 year old boys with machine guns and girls go on a battlefield to fight for us that they don't even know and pledge their allegiance to the country that really don't treat them right, especially when they get back home. God has a way of surrounding us as military soldiers, surrounds the city, surrounds the nation, and he protects us, and we can't even understand it. In the midst of it, God has given us peace. Mm -hmm. Let me just share with you. We went to Czech Republic, and we were there right after 9-11. We went to Czech Republic, mm -hmm. and everything was tight. And uh, even the airport was very strict. But we went there to minister, and we went to this night school. See, in the Czech Republic, the children work during the day and they go to school at night. We were at this high school. It's a night school. We got off the bus, we went in, and they began to ask the question, why does the United States of America citizens think it's a big deal to be bombed in 30 
uh, 3,300 people are killed by two planes, three, three planes, two hidden the World Trade Center, and then one hidden the Pentagon. Why are they so upset? They think they're special. They wanted to know, why are the Americans so upset over the 9-11 bombing with planes? And they went on to say, in the Czech Republic, we get bombed every day. And you all have become spoiled. And you all have become like you are prima donnas. And you come to the conclusion that you ought not be bombed. And things got hot and heavy in that school, night school that night. And we Americans, all 19 of us, had to be ushered away because they wanted to know why we thought we were so special. We got to understand that the God we serve kept us. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, he showed himself merciful that night. We thousands of miles away from home. Only thing we had was a passport. We didn't even have a plane at the ready to take us off. But we had to get out of there because the peace of God was able to keep us. And it's a peace that you have no understanding of. He says the peace of God which surpass all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. If you have anxiety problems, just understand the peace of God has availability. Understand that the peace of God is present. Understand in the midst of your anxiety, in the midst of your worry, God has peace that surpasses all of your understanding. Mm -hmm. I said to you that, that when you're doing a topic, you have to understand that there are several scriptures that will support your topic. I'm talking about anxiety tonight. So my first point to you is we must praise in the midst of our trouble. Mm -hmm. My second point was you must pray in the midst of our troubles. My third point is we must participate in the midst of our troubles. You see, we think that God ought to just bring it all before us and sit it down as if we at a, a fine dining table. But if you're going to have peace, you're going to have to participate. And the participation is to trust God in the middle of it. And the participation is to get in the word of God. When you're crying, when you're agonizing, when you're going through, when anxiety has taken over, when paranoia has set in, sit down with the word of God. So therefore, we have to participate. Just as the physical body needs food to survive, our spiritual bodies need the food, the word of God, in order to survive. Right. A man was asked the other day, he, he had two dogs. One white dog and one black dog. He had two dogs. A man came over his house and the dogs were about the same size. They were born the same time. He, he received them the same time. And they, the man asked the owner, he says, which dog wins the fight? The answer was, whichever dog I feed the most. I say to you today, you must participate with God. <laughs> By feeding your mankind, by feeding your spiritual man, the word of God, and the word of God will strengthen you. Amen. The word of God will free you from anxieties. People are worried about everything. They're worried about death of loved ones. They're worried about those who were damaged severely in the astral world tragedy. We're worried about who's going to come home without being killed. Who's going to going to make it back without being sick? Who's going to bring a disease home? And if, if the disease come home, how many of us in the household will be wiped out? We're worried about some things and these things are real. Don't shuck them off. Don't act like they don't exist. These things are real. But the peace of God surpasses all understanding. We have to trust in his peace. In Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 28, 
Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 28. Luke brings up this question. Can you add one cubit to your height? Can you even add a cubit to your height? He says, if you can't handle the small things in life, why are you worried about the big things that God can handle? If you can't handle the little thing of adding an inch, a cubit, adding a millimeter to your height, if you can't handle that, what makes you think you can handle your issues all on your own? Luke chapter 12 declares to us that, that God feeds the ravens. In the Jewish world, the raven was a nasty bird. The Jewish world, the, the ravens was a very disrespected bird. And God takes time to feed the ravens. Why don't you think he can feed you? If God clothed the grass of the field, Luke chapter 12 says, what, what make you think he can't clothe you? What make you think he can't give you a place to, to stay? Because he says the grass is up in the field one day and the next day it is off to the furnace to be burned. And God clothes the grass of the field. I'm trying to tell somebody tonight, don't. Don't worry, be happy. I mean, I'm trying to tell somebody tonight, don't let anxiety take over you. Right. Somebody's worried about a court case. Somebody's worried about a divorce case. Somebody's worried about whether or not the person going to treat you right or treat you badly. I'm saying to you, don't let anxiety have its way with you. Praise God. Pray to God. And participate with God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the Apostle Paul says these words, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. I'm saying to you tonight, if you love the Lord, if you're obeying his calling, and I'm not talking about being called to preach, if you're obeying his calling as a child of God, if you're working for and serving for the Lord, if you really love the Lord and you're expressing that love to the Lord, then all things work together. Even when God says no in your prayer, even when God delays the answer in your prayer, even when you're having to pray over and over again the, the same prayer, and I do say you ought to keep knocking and praying over and over again. Even when you're having to pray over and over again, let me just say to you tonight, God hears you, but God knows what's best for you. Have you ever thought about if God bless you with that, you'll be selfish about it? Have you ever thought about if, if God doesn't, doesn't give you what you want, he has a plan for your life that's greater than you can imagine? Have you ever thought about God is in control so much so that regardless of what other people want for you, God wants the best for you? He's God. I say to you tonight, don't be anxious for anything. But in everything, take it to God in prayer. Take it to God in praise and take it to God in participation. Maybe somebody listening to me tonight who's never tried this God I'm talking about. His name is the eternal God, Jehovah, the self-existing God. His son's name is Jesus. And it is Jesus the Christ, the righteous son of God, who paid the price for you. Philippians chapter 4 the last verse 17 is what we read. It says that he will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. You need Jesus to avoid anxiety. You need Jesus to avoid worry. You need Jesus to make your life the better. I submit to you tonight, Jesus, the Son of God. He fixed it for you. Over 2,000 years ago, he took 
a tree, took a, a, a branch, he took a stake, he took a cross, and marched up Calvary Hills. He died on that hill that day. For you, if no one in this world would have been born but you, he would have died just for you. He died for you. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, Jesus got up with all power, all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus got up for you. And tonight you can be saved. Tonight you can be empowered. Tonight you can guarantee your spot in heaven. If you would join me in prayer, trust in the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. I really want to know. I really got to know. I really have to know. Are you saved? If you want peace, that surpass all understanding. Try Jesus. You've tried it. You've tried her. You've tried him. Some of us have even tried them. I say try Jesus. And you can do that tonight by joining me in this short prayer, by just repeating after me and inviting Jesus into your heart. Will you bow your head with me and invite him into your heart today? Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer honestly believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we believe that you're born again. We believe that if you trust this story to get you to heaven when you die, We believe that you're born again and you're on your way to heaven. There may be others who struggle with sin just like I do. I want to say to you, stay with Jesus. Keep trusting him. I want to pray for you. Father God, we pray, Father God, for those who struggle, those who doubt, those who are insecure, in their salvation. We pray that you bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray for rededication. We pray for renewal. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us, that we would trust you in the midst of anxiety. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others who are looking for a church home or you are in between church homes or you're without a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church, the great church in Southeast Houston where Jesus the Christ is the center of attention and he's the main attraction. I recommend the New Beginning Church. If you want to join the New Beginning Church, please inbox me and let me know that you want to become a part of this great family of faith. I want to welcome you continue to be a blessing in your life and you can be a blessing in the life of our church where you can work and become a part of a great family. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight for our Bible study. Thank you for being a part of it. I really want to know. I I really got to know. I really need to know. I really have to know. Are you saved? Saved people going to heaven. Born again people are going to see Jesus. Uh, Born again people will be raptured up. I really want to know.
are you saved? Are you saved? Just remember to pray, to praise and participate with God. His answer is in, in the Word of God. In our prayer time, we're praying for Sister Vivian Azaha. Sister Vivian Azaha, we're lifting her in prayer. We're praying for the family of the loved ones who have lost uh, loved ones in the, the concert in Houston at the Astrodome. We're lifting that those families before the Lord. And we're lifting those who were hurt and those who are being affected before the Lord. What a, what a, a terrible tragedy it is. We're praying for our youth and young people that they will continue to turn their lives toward Jesus Christ. Look to him for a sense of oneness. Look to him for a sense of purpose. For Jesus has purpose for us. So we'll be lifting all these in prayer as we come before the Lord in prayer tonight. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can do so in two forms. Number one, you can mail your offering in to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can zell your money your tithes, your offering, your, your, your gift, you can zell by way of lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is as we lift Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. And whatever you do, don't get tied up in anxiety. Get tied up in praise. Get tied up in prayer. And get tied up with participating through the word of God and participating with God himself. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you, Father. For this, your word, we thank you for all that you do. Now, Lord, we pray for Sister Vivian Arthur. We ask you to touch her, heal her, keep her. We ask you to strengthen her, Lord. We pray for every family that's impacted by the tragedy at Astro World Houston. We pray, Father God, that you give them direction, give them hope. We pray, Father God, that you lead every family member and every person that was hurt to you, Father God, that you will minister to them. We pray for our youth and our young people all over this world. We pray that you give them Jesus, we pray that you give them hope. We pray that you give them life. We pray that you lead them, guide them in a plain and simple direction. Lord, we ask you to remove all anxiety. Bless the church to be a, a healing place for them to come. Bless the church to be a light in this cold, dark, and dismal world. Bless us, the church, Father God, to minister to them as only we can. It's either the church, Lord, or a lights out. So bless the church to be living, breathing, an organism that will walk with young people and walk with the aged and make a difference in this world. Bless us to be transformative, Father God, in all that we do. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are the New Beginning Church. We are strengthening the church. We are walking together and we are lifting Jesus before other men. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are lifting Jesus. And men are seeing Jesus by reaching, reaching the world through Jesus Christ. John chapter 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.